What is LIDAR? Okay, what is this LIDAR thing that you hear so much about in archaeology? Well, it obviously stands for light detection and ranging. Duh! I know we all know this. So, what does light detection and ranging mean? How this works is there is an instrument that's put into an airplane or a helicopter and it flies over an area. And this instrument shoots a ton of lasers every second at the ground, right? So if you picture an airplane flying over an area, as it goes by, it's going choo, 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 choo. And that is the actual sound, of course. Choo, 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 choo. As it shoots these lasers down to the ground, it has a measuring device. So when the laser bounces back, you can measure the precise distance. And you guys, this distance gets really, really accurate, right? Really down to the millimeter of this kind of thing. It's, it's very, very close. So as the airplane flies by and shoots the lasers down, it kind of goes across and then it goes back again. And it just does that sort of vacuuming pattern. You know what I mean? As it goes across the ground. And ultimately, if the airplane knows how high it is, it can then make a really precise measurement down to the ground, right? You just have this piece of equipment, it measures both ways. Pretty awesome. Now, I think this makes sense if you're flying over a desert area or this kind of thing. You're like, oh yeah, plane flies over, makes a map, that's great. What about in the jungle? So you'll hear things like, well, LIDAR can see under the canopy. And how does it do that? Wouldn't you think that when the plane flies over this really thick jungle, that it would just measure down to the trees and that would be it. Now, because the plane is shooting so many lasers per second, right? That every few of them will get through the trees and through the ground, right? And to the ground, I should say. There's gonna be openings in the trees. And as the wind blows, the trees are gonna sort of change their spot a tiny bit and the leaves will rustle a little bit. So the lasers can make it all the way to the ground. So overall, you can take the average of the farthest distances, right, as the plane goes by, enabling you to, yes, indeed, see through the trees, but you're not really seeing through them. You're just waiting for them to move so you can actually get to the ground that makes sense. And as we've done these in the Maya world, it has been really fascinating to see the sort of new sites uncovered. And really more than that, you get a better map of sites we already know. I know you hear in the news all the time, ooh, new Maya site found. In my experience, that's not 100% true. It should say, same old Maya site that we know, we know a little better than we used to. Right? That's the reality of it. I'm not saying you won't find a brand new one every so often, but it is very rare. Now, is this technology magic? No. Do you still need real archaeologists like myself to go ground check the situation? Yes. Because although this technology is really, really great, I mean, you guys, we all love it if we are able to have a LIDAR map of our site. I've worked with some of these and they are fantastic, but we still need real trained archeologists to go across the ground and ground check it because sometimes what looks like a pyramid can only be a hill. One thing I forgot to say, LIDAR is an example of remote sensing. What that means in archaeology is that we are sensing the site and measuring the site from far away. Notice it's not called close sensing. You're not on the ground. You are remote sensing from an airplane in the sky.